we're going to talk about uh, some notation. In this particular, we're going to talk about something called piecewise defined functions. So what happens in practice is there are times when a function can't easily be described by the single function, but it looks like different functions in different places depend on where you are in the domain. So I'm going to look at an example of this. And what I'm going to do is look at a couple examples, and basically this is mostly just about notation. We've seen some of these ideas before, uh, but really we're going to formalize some notation here just to look at this in a different way. So let's define a new function. And we're going to define this function. We're going to call it Norbert. And Norbert is x plus the absolute value of x. What is that? So if I graph this beast, it looks like this. Now notice, if x is a negative number, for example, negative 2, I'm just going to get x plus the absolute value of x, but that's just going to be 2, so minus 2 plus 2 is 0. For any negative number, this is going to be negative plus positive, and they're going to be the same magnitude, so they're going to cancel out. So when x is 0, it's 0, and over here, it's just going to be equal to 0. Okay. What happens if I plug in a positive value? If I plug in x is 1, it's just going to be 1 plus absolute value of 1 is 2. If I plug in x equals 3, I'm just going to get 2 times that number, right? Because the absolute value of x is just x if x is positive. So I get x plus x is 2x. So Norbert looks like that. Now, suppose I want to express this in a different way. One way I could do it would be like this. I could say, well, it's going to be 0 if x is less than or equal to 0. But if it's positive, if x is a positive number, the value of Norbert is 2x. All right, that's perfectly valid. That's fine. Um, unfortunately, that's not uh, arcane enough. And we're going to need some notation here to talk about this in a different way that's a little more compact. Okay? Why do we do that? Um, it's mostly just to confuse students. But we want some different notation here. And the idea is this. And again, this is just no notation. So an equivalent way to do this is I'm going to say now I'm going to define this one value here and a different value over here. So I'm going to tell you that I'm going to define this for different values. So we're going to use that symbol. And I'm going to tell you over what parts of the domain I'm going to define this. So it's going to have two different relationships. One, if x is negative, and I'm going to use a different formula if x is positive. And what are those formulas? I'm going to just say, if x is less than or equal to 0, I'm going to use 0. If x is greater than 0, its value is 2x. Okay? So, we have four equivalent ways uh, to describe the same function. One is x plus absolute value of x. One is graphically. One, I can just say it out in terms of uh, a written description, or I can use this new notation. If I'm going to be pedantic, I should put a comma there and a period there. So this new notation is this. Right? We use this curly brace to say, watch out, here comes a piecewise defined function. We def tell you which function to use depending on the value of x, and we tell you how to decide what the value of x is, and then given that value for x, Here's the formula that you're going to use. Okay? So let's look at another example. So I'm going to give you a piecewise function, and then I'm going to try to graph that thing. So we're going to go the other way. So what do I call this function? We're going to call this function Harry. Okay, so it's going to be piecewise defined. Now, 
x is less than minus 4, we're going to use the function minus 2x. If x is between minus 2 inclusive, but not 2, we're going to use, what, 1. And if x is bigger than 4, we're going to use um, 1 half x. Okay? So this is saying that if I give you a value of x less than negative 4, you use this. If x happens to be between minus 2 and 2, but including minus 2, the height of the function, the height of the graph is going to be 1. If x is bigger than 4, I'm just going to take 1 half of whatever you give me. So let's graph this thing. Alright, so what do we have? x is less than minus 4 between 2 and minus 2 and greater than 4. So now if x is out here, I'm going to use minus 2x. Oh, great. So let's see. This is going to be a have a negative slope. If x is negative, minus 2 times that's going to be positive. So this is going to come down like that. Now here's the thing. The function is not defined at minus 4. So I'm going to put an open dot there. And this says that out here, I'm going to use this function minus 2x. But right at x equals minus 4, it's not defined. Okay? So that's what that open dot means. If the value of x is between here and here, the height is always going to be equal to 1. Okay? Now, here, if x equals minus 2, it's defined. And I'm going to fill that dot in just to let you know that that's where it's defined. But if x equals 2, it's not anything we're going to leave that as an open dot. Finally, if x is greater than 4, if I'm out here, it's going to be 1 half x. So it's going to have a positive slope and go up. So when x is, say, 6, it's going to be 3. But notice it's not going to include 4. So it's going to have an open dot there. And it's going to be a line with slope 1 half. Okay. And note, I get the domain of this thing. What's the domain? The domain is going to be from minus infinity to minus 4. It doesn't include that. It's going to include minus 2 to 2. But it includes minus 2, but not 2. And then it's going to go from positive 4 off to infinity. Okay. Thank you.